All right, guys, so now we're moving on to things. So we got the bench press, and in my opinion, I think it's probably the lift that you can mess with the least. Like, so little, so we can take the same principles from the squat and apply it to the bench. So how are we gonna dice this down? Obviously, a lot of you guys have seen distinctly two different kinds of bench pressers. Like, you're gonna get the guys who are predominantly like flat back in it, like me and Pops, you know, um, and then- The most alpha way to bench, bro. The most alpha? We're using that verbiage? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> and then you're obviously gonna have like your high archers. But the thing is, if you don't have that flexibility, the likelihood of you ever benching like those guys, it's very, slim, very, very, very slim. Like you need to be built with that kind of flexibility or something remotely close to like work towards it. So we're just gonna, to keep this simple, we're just gonna break down how we like to bench. Positioning, right? find the position that generates the most force. Yeah, that so. should be like the number one priority. Yeah, so the technique that me and Pablo like to incorporate or techniques you could say is, we use a lot of leg drive and we sink. We sink the bar into our chest every time we pause, right? So we're just gonna share with you guys why we do it and what is like the pros. You know, I don't really think there's any cons. It could be the momentum. Momentum is good, but too much, it's like anything else too fast. Can, can you can swerve? Well, I, I, guess, I guess pretty much the only con is if you miss the window of opportunity in like, the exchange of momentum from like your feet to the press, Misgroove. then maybe like the sink will kind of misgroove and yeah. your elbows will kind of fly back a little bit too much. But I feel like that doesn't that rarely happens. Yeah. But we'll, we'll talk about it. So whenever you're setting up the rack height, you want the bar to be maybe about an inch and a half over the lip, just because once you add load onto the bar. You're just gonna, one, you're gonna sink into the bench. And number two, when you're like kind of retracting your scapula, or for a bunch of people like myself, we like to think of like just, like you like kind of just squeeze and tighten your upper back. You're just gonna be about an inch lower than you would if you were just like fully extended. Like if you guys can see, like right here, fully extended. And then like where I am normally when I set up, it's like, it's like an inch. Um, shorter yeah so whenever you're setting up the bar you don't have any weight a good measuring standpoint is about an inch and a half over the bar so this is this is literally what we're doing is first is we're measuring the rack height so that way we're we're setting ourselves up i don't nicely. know this is the right one though right underneath it might be a little short uh, i don't know no i don't know actually i guesstimated but i don't even think there's numbers no nah, that's about that's good all right see bro it just reflex, bro. What'd you call it earlier? Muscle, what is it? Muscle memory? Muscle memory. So like I said before, the best position generates the most force. And depending on the body composition, flexibility, all that matters. Obviously, hand placement matters as well. At which angle is going to be the most fluid for that energy transfer. Yeah. So obviously what we do is we do a thing called max grip. And it's pretty much just called max grip because we're out as wide as we legally can in competition. And that's index finger on the outermost ring right here. So that's max grip. But because we're so wide that really like, when you're gonna compare like a 47 kilo lifter doing max grip to like obviously super heavy is doing max grip, yeah. it, it looks more normal, right? Cause it's, <laughs> it's right here. It's like slightly wider than shoulder. Whereas when you see someone with a smaller frame doing max grip, it it's wide. gonna look comically it's just different, right? So we do max grip, right? And how I like to think of the bench, right, is the first thing you wanna do is start applying tension through the position of the palm in which you hold the bar, right? Shelf, right? The shelf in your hands. What you wanna set yourself up is the most comfortable position where your wrist joint, your elbow joint, and your shoulder joint are in just like, complete alignment, right? Because it's like, if you're gonna notice, when you go down, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a J curve, right? So it's like, this is where I wanna be, right? And if you guys can see, just imagine like I'm on the bench, like wrist joint, elbow, shoulder, 
in alignment, right? Like you don't you don't want to have like your elbows out. You don't want to have any any elbow bend. You want to be able to be as stable and rigid as possible, right? As I am right now, I am completely like flat, like butt flat, upper, but my upper back is like relaxed. It's not like flexed or tensed up or anything. So I'm gonna find that position in my hands where it just feels like I'm able to kind of have a nice little stack, right? So my wrist joint is the first point in which I'm gonna like set, right? So at this point, my wrist is where I want them. So then I kind of grab the bar to make sure it gets locked in. And then I start like kind of wedging you and find squeezing that shelf, baby. my upper back together mm -hmm. to create the base, right? Because you have to think, when you're trying to press as much weight as you possibly can, your upper back is gonna be where you press that off. So think of it like your launch pad. You want your launch pad to be like as secure as possible because it's gonna be what you pretty much like stabilize your joints over, right? So, so got the wrist set up where I want it, grip locked in, back nice and tight. And at this point, I kind of start to roll back a little bit because it allows me to put my shoulders in a much preferred position, right? So I'm kind of leaning back a little bit. I'm like rolling on top of like my platform that I've created with my back, right? So, right? And then put, put my feet where I want them. I'm nice and tight. As you guys can see, shoulders, elbows and wrists are all in alignment. And then at this point, like, I'm just gonna slowly, carefully bench, keep everything nice and tight. And then I'm gonna sink a little bit. And at this point, my butt cheeks are actually, like, they're kind of relaxed, but they're also ready to tense up. And I'm also generating a lot of tension through my quadriceps and the middle of my foot. So at this point, where the judge gives me the press command, or I'm ready to execute the lift, is where I clench my butt cheeks, I drive through my quads, midfoot, and that point of transfer kind of starts to come back up yeah. from the sink, and then you press up. And this is all step by step, but you want to do it where, because everything is timed, right? How he broke it down in an actual bench, it's almost like a one motion type of thing from when you set up, from when you unrack, to when it touches your chest, and from when you use the leg drive to ascend. And that's the most important with this lift is that the most efficient you can be, again, the better the better technique, the precision matters because you only have so much time to where you're at like the most peakest, right? Like the most strongest that you're gonna be. So you make sure you count the seconds and don't waste no more time under the bar because the longer you are, especially in an over your head position or over your face, you know, you're gonna get tired out pretty quick. What is a good tempo where you're staying, your position is staying intact, but you're also not wearing yourself out. So mm -hmm. that's something you wanna keep in mind. Like what, how, how long can you drag it out where you're prioritizing your technique and efficiency, but at the same time, like how fast can you make it before you start to fatigue from just controlling the weight down? And a lot of people like to ask us like why we lift like this? And it's like, so if you look at the rule book, and I think these rules are, the rules that I'm gonna talk about are pretty much, I think in any federation. So pretty much your butt has to stay on the bench. And I think that's like the, the biggest one, right? Because what you see with a lot of people who leg drive is their butt starts to come up from the bench and it's like so elevated that it essentially turns into a decline press, right? As you guys know, you can bench more on decline press. Are you really bench pressing? Is it really an honest lift? That's just like a little quick rundown of how we like to bench, like why we like to sink. There's two variations where right? you can either like sink the bar or you can do soft touch. Soft touch is where you pretty much like, it's a soft touch, like the bar makes the slightest amount of contact on your chest, right? And pretty much how you do that is you're just like so tight and tense that you're just like holding the bar here instead of like kind of like letting it sink, right? But in my opinion, when you sink, 
you're actually kind of utilizing your lats a little bit because in essence it's like I think the upper back is the most underrated part of the bench press. When people think bench press, they just think triceps chest. and chest. Yeah. But in reality, when you're doing this properly and you're taking all these little variables and steps into account and you wanna generate the maximum amount of force you can that's allotted within the rule book, you gotta count the lats, man. Like just literally, like if you're at home watching this video, like put your hands out, tighten your back, and put your elbows, like tell me what 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 row what 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 movement looks like this? T V cable row, bro. Or bro, chest supporter any, row. Any any kind of row, right? You're recruiting your back. So when you're on a bench and like you have a hard surface beneath you and you have weight on top of you, like and you're nice and tight, it's almost like a rubber band effect. So when you're at this point and you're sinking, your lats are stretched. Like you're pretty much in a row position. So it's like when you're here and press, you're getting, it, it just helps with that transfer of force from your leg drive. That launch pad, bro. So launch pad, baby, you that's go on. That's a good little terminology. Yeah, I'm using that. Yeah, that's the first time I ever, ever used that word. Good job, brother. Good job, coach. Appreciate you, athlete. But I think that matters, bro. I mean, people don't talk about it. Transfer of energy through your legs and reverse, reverse the direction on the yeah. ascent. And sink helps with that, bro. When you sink, you're almost catching with the hip. Like weightlifters, yeah. when they freaking, when they go up, you almost see like their hips and their butt. Extend. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. and they're catching with the hips. And then you, it's so subtle because the movement is so fluid. Yeah. But when you slow it down, you can see them almost catch with the hips as the bar is like going up. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the bench. And people like to, brag about oh well it's not strict press or all oh, like yada 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 but at the end of the day is how good is your technique and it, the it's going to show off the numbers like how strong yeah. are you at the bench and that's what i like about powerlifting man sometimes the guy the best powerlifter isn't always the strongest like brute force because in essence powerlifting is a sport where you want to move weight from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. You don't have to be a freaking astrophysicist or like some sort of like doctorate level mm -hmm. like education to, to be good at powerlifting. Like as long as you understand like, okay. Body mechanics. Like a base level, Basic stuff. you know, like, and you just apply it. Like just seek further education in your craft. And because, uh, there's a very distinct difference between knowing something, like just basic knowledge, and then knowing how to apply it or teach it. Because like you can understand something innately, but are you gonna be able to actually apply it in real time? And then a step further, are you gonna be able to help somebody else mm -hmm. like make sense of what you understand, you know? So there's just different ways to go about it but yeah man hopefully you guys take a couple things from this bench if you guys have been thinking about trying the sink out definitely recommend yeah. we've been just like anything else like slow it down slow it down like pausing a pause sink bench bro like lower the weight for sure you're not gonna be like, oh when you're first leading it or learning yeah it? like if you're trying to learn the sink like yeah. go slow Oh, and I guess we could talk about like the con, how like when your elbows kind of come back. Yeah. So there's there's various moments with the transition of energy and speed or with the force as well. So you have to be so precise that, and timing is what makes it, is what makes the bench press when you sink, if that word is oh, correct. That's what happened to me at Worlds. Yeah, so for instance, Jesus at Worlds, he uh, he mistimed the, uh, the press with the leg drive causing him to like, it's almost like you pressed and, and then you leg drive. a little too deep too. Yeah. And you can see it too. If you look at the bench, it went over his head. So yeah. the timing was way off. I guess we could talk about that lift. So everything that could have gone wrong went wrong on that lift, right? And I could literally remember like it was yesterday. So um, it was my third bench at Worlds in Malta. And I think I had 267.5 on a bar, so 589. Yeah, I so I had yeah, 589 pounds on the bar. My best is 600. 
but for whatever reason, and I think this happens to a lot of people, it's like when you peek into a meet and you have a lot of that fatigue dissipate, you're going to feel a little bit more flexible. So that's always something to keep in mind. You're going to feel a little better, well, you're supposed to, you're supposed to feel better on meet day than you do in training because when you're doing a bunch of benching and a bunch of squatting or whatever, and you're just like used to feeling fatigued, that's, that's just how you're neurologically going to be adjusted to, right? So just keep in mind, like, don't freak out if weight feels different on meet day because it's supposed to. If you're peaking properly, you're supposed to literally just, it, like, what feels hard should feel a little easier. I think I, my shoulders were just feeling a little extra good on, and on when I was competing. So I synced about maybe a half inch deeper than I normally do. That was enough for me to like lose position in my wrist, elbows and shoulders. So whenever I was coming up, that bar path, instead of being like controlled in like a J curve, it almost just kind of took like a hard, like my elbows came out in front of me and like the bar was just over my head. So at that point, like I had no power, I had no drive, like anything, any stack, any stability that I had uh, generated or created, like it was, it was done. So I didn't have any of that. It was just a bad lift. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to just hammer these things in, man. Like you want to be precise with like, like are you like how, like how severe, like how severe is your sink going to be? Like, mm -hmm. are you going to sink just a tad bit, or like are you those guys who are like super close grip, sink as low as you can? So it just something that you want to practice in the gym, mm -hmm. and like how we talked about on the squat, like do it in um, increments you can like keep track of, like small, 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 small. Yeah. And then you, you once you find what feels good, stick with it, try to like become as familiar as you can. And then before you know it, like you're literally subconsciously hitting like that same point in which you're pressing it. And another thing too is you have to come in with the intentions of pressing off the chest. I mean, you have something over your face if you're not serious about it and anything could happen, like worst case scenario, it'll fall on you. And make sure you have your thumbs over that bar. Don't be doing suicide grip. Be That's safe. It's, people, I don't know, man. It's very scary when you that see, scary. like when you fell a bench, right? But with the intentions of all that, when you press, it's almost like you're pushing somebody off you. Imagine if you have a cow or, and I really talked about this last video, press as if, as if something is like having force on you and you want to boom get it off you right you come in with the intention of pressing something hard even if it's 135 225 it can be whatever it may yeah. and that press it with ties, intentions it ties in with like the intangibility like yep. like what is your mindset when you're like going for a top set mm -hmm. you know because it's like sometimes if you can just kind of like imagine something like that like you'd be surprised how much more efficient you're gonna be like with your force production. Like you're gonna, you're probably gonna surprise yourself a little yeah. bit if you can just for like a set, like lock in and just like hyper focus on the task at hand. So that's a good point. I'm telling you bro. It's probably one of the most points people forget. And like they, they're, too tech, they're too technical. And it's like, bro, at the core of it, you need to be like pushing something. You're pushing something off your face. Bro. Yeah. You gotta make sure it's, pushed very hard that's true very hard bro